atop Earth's highest mountain above sea level with an environment that looks otherworldly. There is rumored to be something that calls it home. With fierce winds, freezing temperatures, and snow always being present, it doesn't have the best environment to support life. Lurking in the snowy mountains of the Himalayas, there is rumored to be a humanoid creature that roams the mountain's regions. The beast is known by the name the Abominable Snowman, or also referred to as the Yeti. The Yeti has been adapted to many TV shows and movies that make it well known in the public eye. The word Yeti is believed to be a mispronunciation of Yete in the Tibetan Sherpa dialect, which translates to either cliff-dwelling bear or animal of rocky places. The Yeti has starred in Monsters, Inc. and even Scooby-Doo. I personally have really enjoyed every abominable snowman cameo in films and would be absolutely fascinated if such an amazing creature existed. With such a harsh place to live, it is hard to believe that anything could survive in such a place. But today, we will dive into the wonder, the mystery, that is, the Yeti. Yetis are believed to live in the alpine forest below the snow line, but will explore higher altitudes for food or shelter. In Tibetan tradition, it is more likely to hear a Yeti rather than to see it. They are believed to have a diet that consists of frogs, pika, and mosses. Before any western findings, there are signs of the Yeti in Buddhist temples and religious painted scrolls. According to some Tibetan historical writings, the wild people, as they called them, and humans coexisted at one point. The wild people were said to be not fully human or fully animal, but something in between. That is why when they are seen in many Tibetan artifacts, the creature is shown to be something in between man and beast. Back in the 17th century, there was Lama Sangwa Darje, who was a religious Buddhist leader who committed to walking from India to Nepal to live in isolation. While being in isolation and meditation, he said that he claimed to be in contact with friendly Yetis who would bring him food and water which allowed him to focus on his meditation. When one Yeti eventually died, he would keep the creature's scalp as a holy relic in the temple he created in 1667. Later, a Yeti hand would also be added to the temple to pay respect and honor to the creature that made the temple possible. The piece would be used in blessing rituals for temple monks. With so much of a connection to the pieces of the Yeti, the monks refused to let anyone take any piece of it. But in 1959, pieces of the hand bone were stolen by Peter Byron when he switched the Yeti's bone for human ones. Whether actual fact or puffed up folklore, there was an old tale of a yogi who helped the injured Yeti with a splinter in its foot and went on to clean the creature's wound. The beast was so grateful that he went out and brought the yogi back a tiger. The yogi would eventually skin the tiger and offer it to the monastery. Tall tale or not, that would be a very interesting situation. As folklore stories are passed down from generation to generation, it is hard to distinguish what has really happened from legend. The western world began to become aware of an ape-like creature in Nepal when a British naturalist named Brian Hodgkins was exploring Nepal and was taking notes of what he observed in 1889. In his writings, he specifically wrote that there was no monkeys that could be found in the northern and central regions, but in one of his footnotes, he did mention that frightened locals fled from what they refer to as a wild man. He was told by the locals that it walked upright, similar to a man, but wasn't, and was covered in dark hair and had no tail. Stories of the abominable snowman date back for generations, but there is few events that have left a mark in history of Yeti evidence such as the 1951 incident. One late afternoon on November 8, 1951, Eric Shipman and his expedition doctor Michael Ward were working on a glacier together when they stumbled upon what appeared to be giant footprints that looked to have traveled down the glacier. The photograph was taken on the Minglan Glacier west of Mount Everest on the nepal tebet border. Shipton even had the brilliant idea to place his ice axe next to the mysterious footprints to give it something to scale the print by. It was absolutely astonishing to have found any type of footprint in such an environment at such a high altitude was unexplainable. The only forms of life that could have ventured so high would have been bears, yaks, or humans. Another member of Shipton's team saw the remarkable footprint and wrote a memorable letter saying the abominable snowman is not a myth. There is always the light possibility that the footprints were a hoax, but unlike today's explorers and adventurers, they were taken very seriously at their word. This footprint represents the birth in the media of the legendary Yeti. Most cases of the abominable snowman come from sightings or photographs, but never from hard physical evidence. 
much like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster which creates both skeptics and believers. Much like all the other mysterious creatures, all it would take is a single body to prove that there are unknown species living around us. Until that day, we will all be divided on our beliefs of these creatures. It'd be awesome to hear whether or not you believe that these creatures exist and if you have any stories about them. I'd love for you to join the Content Jungle community with a subscription. And if you comment I subscribe, I'll be sure to give it a like. Until next time, it's been Content Jungle, signing out.